On October 7th, Hamas targeted Israel's agriculture to go after their food supply. So a major organization in the Jewish state shifted gears to help the industry come back. And now farmers are planning to make the desert bloom again. Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl has the story. Nachal Oz sits less than a half mile from the Gaza border. On October 7th, Hamas terrorists killed 15 here, including the head of security, kidnapped nine, and also chose another major target. Why did they, they bother to burn this tractor, this one and a half million shekel worth of tractor? Why they bother to burn all of our irrigation equipment? You don't have that much time because Israel and Israeli IDF will come. Agriculture in the Negev is strategically important to Israel's food security. Some 70 percent of vegetables and 20 percent of fruit are grown here. That's why terrorists targeted the agriculture on October 7th. They are trying to, to take the connection from us to our land, to our earth. And if you are not doing agriculture, then why stay here? Why live here? You can live near Tel Aviv. Moran Freebach, head of agriculture at Kibbutz Nachal Oz, has lived here all of his life. Now he's looking forward to the next five years. I see only the potential and I see only work that I have to do in order to rebuild everything and to put everything in, back to, into place better. Not only back as it was, better. That's my mission. Many say that agriculture is at a crisis level here in the area where many say God fulfilled his word to make the desert bloom. Estimates add up to $500 million in lost income, around 100,000 acres of agricultural land affected, and a labor force crisis for farmers who need some 30,000 workers. Before October the 7th, our whole mission was to tackle global hunger with Israeli agricultural expertise. But on October the 7th, we understood that the agricultural crisis is also at home. And so we pivoted almost immediately. That led Danielle Abraham of Volcani International Partnerships to initiate Project Regrow Israel. We spoke to our partners in the field across the Western Negev, the farmers, the regional councils, and we said to them, what do you need? And these people had undergone massive trauma. And they said to me, Danielle, you have to understand right now, we can't even think about the next hour, let alone the next week or months or years ahead. That means Regrow Israel will focus on helping these communities think through their needs, plan to build a better future, and raise money for areas hit the hardest. The foreign workers that were living here, they were targeted in their beds while they were sleeping. In Kibbutz Alomim, 22 Thai and Nepalese workers were murdered and two taken hostage. Since then, one has been released. Established in 1966, Kibbutz Alumim's main income is agriculture, with hundreds of acres of fruit and avocado orchards, plus a large dairy. Terrorists shot holes in the milk tank, ruining it, burned storehouses of food and delayed the milking of cows for days, leading to a huge drop in productivity. Then there's the irrigation equipment. We're farming in the western Negev. It's a semi-arid area. We're farming on the edge of the desert. Everybody knows that the issue of water, Israel is a leader in water use efficiency for agriculture. So the water infrastructure is at the heart of the agricultural economy. This is where the pipes for the irrigation are wrapped around their rubber. Every single one of them was set on fire. In this place, irrigation equipment for the potato crop is now destroyed, as are numerous greenhouses and chicken coops. As Israel's largest pepper grower, Alumim had to leave fields of peppers unharvested. Back at the border of Nachaloz, Moran says they rebuilt their water reservoir destroyed by Hamas and planted wheat. We are doing agriculture until the last meter even now when we are at zone. We are standing right now in the war zone. This is why you see a tank right there. Abraham says the farmers are heroes in Israel's story. Some of the heroes in our society that are going out under fire with a view to the future, with all of their tractors stolen and burned and sowing wheat in the fields. She has great hope for the future. And then my dream is that on this area, which is where Israel made the desert bloom, we will be able to make it bloom once again. They will see the farmers growing back stronger with automation across the dairy and the greenhouses and the packing houses. I want us to see 
new innovations for climate resilient agriculture that the world can come here and learn from. I want to see the new generation coming into farming in Israel. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Kibbutz Nachal Oz and Kibbutz Alumim.